أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everybody to our concluding session of this semester uh, of this term G2 online Quran reading course comes to a close today and we have a special um, presentation for you as we are about to start the holy month of Ramadan. So if I can um, now kindly ask my assistant to deliver her presentation and then after the presentation we'll have a short quiz and then we'll have a course report as well as some certificates that we're going to hand out to our lovely, lovely students who've been attending for the last eight weeks as well as our teachers and other members of the team. Jazakumullah. So if I can hand over to my assistant now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, indeed. Okay, Jazakumullah. So as you've been told that Ramadan is coming up and we have a presentation for you. Um, in preparation for Ramadan and obviously you know G2 is a Quran course so it has to be related to the Holy Quran so uh, we'll have a Tilawat translation Hadith and Nazim first and then I'll go into my presentation um, and then the rest of activities so for the Tilawat um, can I call um, Jila Nur Saiba. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi alquran hudan وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فما شهد منكم الشهر فليصم وما كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 186. Jazakum Allah. Jazakallah. Now, I would like to call G247 to do the translation of the verses. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, for gracious, for merciful. The month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was sent down as a guidance for mankind with proof of guidance and discrimi discrimination. 
Therefore, whosoever of you is present at home in this month, let him fast therein, but whoso is sick or in a is on a journey shall fast the same number of the days. Of the days. And that desires to give you facility and he desires not hardship for you and that you may complete the number and you may and that you may exult and therefore his having guided you and that you may be grateful Zakala now T247 will recite the hadith for us Hazrat Abdullah, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar Radi, Radi Allah. And who? G247? I think there's been some technical issues. So I'll recite the hadith and then we'll move on to the nazim. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Amr Can you hear him? Come on. He's back, sorry. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of said on the day of judgment it will be said to the Quran said to the man devoted to the Quran go on reciting the Quran and continue ascending in rank in the heavens recite in the slow rhythmic and medanese Melodious manner as you had been reading in worldly life. Your final place will be where you shall reach at the time of the, the last ayat of your recitation. Musnad. Now we'll have Arnism. Quran Subsecha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Quran is a sabse-acha. Quran is a sabse-piala. Quran is a sabse-piala. Quran is a sabse-piala. Allah niya ka khat hai. Jo meru naam aaya, Ustani ji parha do jaldi mujhe sipara. Ya Rab, tu rahim karke, Hamko sikha de Qur'an, Har dukh ki ye dawa ho, Quran is a Quran is a piara. Quran is a Quran is a hara. Jazakala. Jazakala. Now, because Ramzan is me, 
Um, so I'll be talking to you about the importance of reading the Quran during Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran that in chapter 2, verse 186, he says, The month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was sent down as a guidance for mankind with clear proofs of guidance and discrimination. He then tells us in chapter 97, verse 2, Surely we sent it down on the night of destiny. Then Allah Ta'ala tells us that we should read the Holy Quran. And he says in chapter 2, verse 122, They to whom we have given the book, follow it as it ought to be followed. It is these that believe therein. And he tells us in chapter 38, verse 30, This is a book which we have revealed to thee, full of blessings, that they may reflect over its verses, and those gifted with understanding may take heed. The Holy Prophet wasalam, has also instructed us this. He said, Upon you is the recitation of the Quran and the remembrance of Allah, for it is light for you on earth and a reserve for you in the heaven. The Promised Messiah wasalam, has also reiterated the importance of reading the Holy Quran. He said, the root of worship is in recitation of the Holy Quran because if the words of the Beloved are read or listened to, they certainly stir love in a true lover and exhilarate ardor. And obviously the Beloved here is Allah Ta'ala and his words are what is the Holy Quran. Our current Khalifa has also said in a Friday sermon, the Holy Quran should be learned and recited. Those who know its meaning should teach it to others. So now that we know that we have to recite the Holy Quran, we should also know how should we recite the Holy Quran. Hazrat Abi Musa narrates that the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, The one who does not recite the Quran melodiously is not from among us, i.e. he does not follow our way. Someone asked a question about the Holy, how the Holy Quran should be recited from the Promised Messiah. And he answered, The Holy Quran should be read carefully and should be reflected on. And this relates that there are many reciters of the Holy Quran who are cursed by the Holy Quran. A person who reads the Quran but does not practice it is cursed by the Holy Quran. When reciting the Holy Quran, one comes to a verse about blessing. Blessing should be sought from God Almighty and with chastisement of people is mentioned, refuge should be sought from God Almighty from God, Al God Almighty's chastisement. The Quran should be read with due care and attention and it should be practiced on. That is the end of my presentation which tells you about the importance of reading the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. As we know, the Quran was revealed to us in this month. So what we should do in this month is read the whole Quran daily and recite it beautifully and melodiously. Jazakumullah. Now we'll have a quiz on Ramadan. Firstly, the questions will be displayed on the screen. And you should try answering them on your own. You should answer the questions on, on the poll that will appear on the screen. Carefully read each option before answering. And lastly, the answer will be displayed on the screen. Let's go through the quiz. The first question is, in which Islamic month the Holy Quran was revealed? The options are A. Rajab B. Muharram C. Ramadan E. Shaban let me start the poll for you. Okay. So I'll repeat the question again. In which Islamic month was the Holy Quran revealed? Option A, Rajab. Option B, Muharram. Option C, Ramadan. Option D, Ramadan. 
oh, sorry, option D, Shaban. So, 100% of you have said it's Ramadan. So, let's see if that's the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Well done. Okay. Our next question is, Muslims celebrate which Eid after Ramadan? Option A, Eid al-Fitr. Option B, Eid al-Adha. Or option C, Muslims don't celebrate anything. Let's see what you think the right answer is. I'll repeat the question. Muslims celebrate which Eid after Ramadan? Is it A, Eid al-Fitr, B, Eid al-Adha, or C, Muslims don't celebrate anything? So, 80% of you have said it's Eid al-Fitr. So, let's see if that's the correct answer. It is. Well done, mashallah. Okay, let's move on to our next question. Muslims celebrate which Eid? Oh, sorry. One second. Okay, so our next question is The first verse revealed to the Holy Prophet وسلم, was Iqra bismi rabbikal lazi khala. Is that true or false? Let's see. So I'll repeat the question. The first verse revealed to the Holy Prophet وسلم, was Iqra, rab Iqra bismi rabbikal lazi khala. Is that true or false? So 75% of you has said that it's true. So let's see if that's the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Well done, mashallah. Let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> Our next question is, what do Muslims do during Ramadan? A, perform Hajj. B, keep fast. C, celebrate Eid. Or D, Read the whole Quran. So this is a multiple choice question. So you can choose uh, two options. Okay. There are two correct answers. So I'll repeat the questions. What do Muslims do during the month of Ramadan? A. They perform Hajj. B. Keep fast. C. Celebrate Eid. Or D. Read the whole Quran. So. Um, all of you have picked only two options. And though the options you've picked are keep fast or read the Holy Quran. So let's see if you uh, if what you've picked is the right answer. Okay, one of it is right. Let's see the other one. Mashallah, well done. So both the answers are correct. Muslims keep fast and read the Holy Quran. All right. So our next question and our last question is. <clears throat> What is the maximum number of fasts a Muslim can keep during Ramadan? Option A, 28 fasts. Option B, 29 fasts. Option C, 30 fasts. Or option D, 31 fasts. So, um, I'll say it again. What is the maximum number of fasts a Muslim can keep during Ramadan? Okay. Is it 28 fasts, 29 fasts, 30 fasts, or 31 fasts? So 65% of you have said that it's 30 fasts. So let's see if that's correct. If that is correct. Okay. So the minimum number is 29 fast and the maximum is 30 fast. So well done to those who got it correct. Okay. So that's the end of our quiz. And now we'll have our certificate ceremony. Assalamualaikum. Um, if I can deliver my course report first. Yes. Okay, Jazakullah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Welcome everybody once again to our concluding session. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, absolutely wonderful presentation. Uh, we are about to uh, uh, join in with the blessed month of Ramadan um, and I hope that you've understood uh, the extra importance you need to put onto reciting Quran in that blessed month. Reciting Quran is one of those things that should be as part of your routine as brushing your teeth. 
you should feel as icky um, if you haven't read the, the Quran on a daily basis as if you would feel if you hadn't brushed your teeth. It should be absolutely uh, uh, an integral part of your daily routine. But in the month of Ramadan, it becomes even more important. So I hope that that has um, passed on to you. So it is our concluding session today. Um, and I have to deliver a report to the senior team. So if you uh, can kindly please listen to the course report, which is for the senior team, as well as for parents, as well as to um, the students. And then we'll move on into what we can do next. Okay. So the course report to the senior team. G1, which was the sister course that um, ran before G2, and G2, the remit is to provide knowledge of and practical application of rules of Tajweed in an online environment. Initially extremely popular with high demand for places, the appetite did change. G2 has reinvented to tie in with Al Hafizun by offering a practical application course using selected por portions of the Nisab al Hifz syllabus. The curriculum, the Sino Quran lessons 5 to 21 were revised, then we and Idgham were omitted due to a reduced term length. Selected prayers and selected commandments from the Holy Quran were used to practice application of the rule of the day. Hard words of the lover and mispronounced letters were also covered. The course was delivered over a period of nine weeks, comprising eight teaching weeks and one week off for a half-term school holiday. There were 32 lessons in total for a week, and there were six teachers, four support staff, a course in charge and an admin assistant. The audience in G1 and G2 is young and attention needs to be maintained in an online environment for 55 minutes, four days a week. Good visuals and a segmented lesson were crucial to keep the eyes and the mind engaged. Teacher-led lessons Monday to Wednesday introduced and practiced the rules. The Thursday student, the Thursday student-led day allowed students to showcase their homework practice in smaller breakout rooms and get bespoke feedback. Mispronounced letters, MPL, mispronounced letters were introduced in an appealing way, one letter a day. And later in the course, hard words of the lover were introduced. The technique of breaking the word up into small chunks and combining to achieve correct recitation before attempting fluency was used. Feedback was collected via a form sent out to parents. We asked how good was the main teaching and we received back that um, it achieved 4.83 out of a maximum of five marks. So that's how um, the parents felt about the main teaching. How good was the BR teaching, the one in the breakout rooms on a Thursday? That received five out of five, mashallah. We asked if the time, the six o'clock time, suited the family, and the vast majority said yes. We also asked the segmented lesson format, broken down into rules and then practice, and then moving into mispronounced letters and so on, of breaking things up into small chunks. How did students find that? And that was very well liked, receiving five out of five. We also asked for some general feedback outside of those questions. And what we received is being displayed on the screen. It was really quite interesting to see that parents are, are learning too. And we always recommend that if you can, uh, the family should sit around with their child uh, to watch the lessons. Many, many parents have gone on to become teachers uh, from sitting with their children on the G courses. So um, 
although it's designed for children, many parents found it um, a really, really good way of improving their knowledge as well. So the course is about teaching. Um, and it's important to know that whilst we were teaching online, we couldn't see your children and we couldn't um, gauge um, from their facial expressions whether they were absorbing. Um, it's important to know how good the learning was. Um, and parents reported that all aspects were a learning point and they themselves learnt as well. So everyone um, basically learnt some of the rules, some of the prayers from the Holy Quran, the pronunciation on some of the letters, how to deal with hard words, some commandments, the opening prayers that were used and the closing prayer, uh, that received five. Those um, opening prayers and closing prayers are recited on a daily basis. So, alhamdulillah, um, everybody has learned. Okay, so that concludes my course report. So, students and parents, what next? What are we going to do now that the course is finished? We started way back on the 8th of January, 2024. And now we're going to finish today on the 7th of March, 2024. And we hope and pray that it has been a fun journey. But you might be wondering, what should we do next? So to recap, back in G1, which was in the September term, we taught most rules um, of the Dweet there. We practice them in G2, and that provides the basis for some more rules too. And you can now um, go through the whole of the Quran with fresh eyes and with fresh knowledge and uh, improve your recitation. You just need to remember what you've been taught and apply those rules wherever needed. You can also memorize the selected commandments and the prayers from the Holy Quran are not too long and can be memorized with their translation so that you know what it is that you're actually reciting. And a really good technique is to recite a few times by looking and then repeat without looking. Spend about half an hour a day. You can do one a day and revise it daily. You could memorize 29 during the month of Ramadan this year. Routine. Routine is absolutely crucial in success. You should always set a time to recite. You should do what works for you. All families are different, all routines are different, all lifestyles are different. Find your time is a good time to recite, but it may not necessarily suit everyone. The important thing is to actually make the time. You can, before you go to school, do some recitation. You can, if you find it's easier, as soon as you come in from school, uh, do some recitation, maybe before you go to bed, whatever works for you. And, Stick to that routine. That's why it's called routine. Stick to that time and make it a part of your daily, daily routine. Finally, I want to say Jazakumullah for honouring us by allowing us to teach you. All the teachers and all the support staff uh, in this entire term there's been just one unavoidable absence from one of the staff. They're really dedicated, uh, they're really enthusiastic, and they absolutely uh, feel privileged to be able to teach you. So we want to say Jazakumullah for honouring us, by allowing us to teach you. And that concludes my um, guidance to you about what to do next. If I can now hand back to my assistant, uh, we have some certificates to display and hand out. They will be sent out by email um, uh, after the course is finished. 
So over the weekend, inshallah, you should be receiving them. If I can now hand back to my assistant to display the certificate. Jazakumullah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Just give me one second while I screen share. I can also screen share if you need to. Um, that would be better because okay, something no is wrong with my laptop. Okay, no worries. Here we are. So we're going to start off with our teachers, our support teachers, and then we're going to go on to our teachers. And then there'll be uh, students who participated in the course. And then last, but very much not least, um, are the students who had uh, really, really high attendance. If I can ask my assistant to please go through the certificates. Okay. So, Ashfa Khalid. Barakallahu lakum. Madiha Mahmood. Barakallahu lakum. Maliha Gondal. Barakallahu lakum. Mubashra Shakur, Barakallahu lakum. Hafia Khan, Barakallahu lakum. Hania Talat, Barakallahu lakum. Maryam Drame, Barakallahu lakum. Shazia Khan, Barakallahu lakum. Shiba Rashid, Barakallahu lakum. Wajiha Ahmed, Barakallahu lakum. These are now certificates of participation for students. Anabia Asif, Barakallahu lakum. Ikan Akbar, Barakallahu lakum. Nuruddin uh, Deen Wasim, Barakallahu lakum. Safia Rahman, Barakallahu lakum. Salva Zahur, Barakallahu lakum. Sara Malik, Barakallahu lakum. Shahriyar Heather, Barakallahu lakum. Tahra Alim, Barakallahu lakum. And these now are certificates for those students who uh, achieved very high attendance. Alina Chaudhary, Barakallahu lakum. Isha, Isha Nadeem, Barakallahu lakum. Isa Kasama, Barakallahu lakum. Um... Lidan Shetu. I think I'll say Dan. Oh, sorry. Zedan Shetu. Barakallahu lakum. And that concludes our our um, certificates. Um, just bear with me now for a second. Yeah. Okay. So, um, with that, we are now concluding our course. If any parents uh, wish to um, uh, give any feedback today, please do raise your hands. Or if any students want to, please do raise your hands. We can give a, um, some minutes, some time to some feedback online. D310, Assalamu alaikum. I actually don't need on it, sorry. Okay, no worries, that's okay. Everybody feels very shy. Um, okay, if, um, if no one has any feedback to give today, your forms um, uh, were very useful. If anybody hasn't filled in the feedback form and wants to give feedback, uh, that form is still available for you to, to use. Um, and with that, I think that we can conclude our course. I'd just like to say um, uh, Jazakumullah once again. Ramadan Mubarak. And I will end the meeting uh, with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.